And this didn't just start this year. This has been going on for over a decade. Five years ago, I wrote a letter to the um, advance, to the opinion section of the advance. And it's very brief. They don't give you a lot of space. Basically, I said, this is a letter to Staten Island parents. Here's what's going on. There's uh, the, the, the new recreational way of getting high is with prescription medication. This has been going on for a while. It's a, it's a current trend, and it's an ongoing trend, and it's escalating. Uh, and here's what you need to do to, uh, to intervene, to, to, to make a difference in your loved one's life. And, and uh, you know, very briefly, I said you need to confront it. First of all, if you have any questions, if there's any doubt, nobody knows your family member better than you do. Nobody. So if you have any doubt, something's going on. Secondly, have them tested. And do something about it. Don't, don't just take the, any kind of a routine excuse, something that says, oh no, it was just a one-time thing. You don't believe that. We are dealing with, with these particular drugs. They're opioids, right? So they're synthetic opiate, opium. They are, in fact, heroin without being in a powder form and cooked up and injected. But they're heroin. So if you take, if you take one of these pills uh, for, for a purpose other than the medical purpose, purpose and what it's intended for, but you take it to get high, right, to alter your consciousness, you're running the same risk as if you used a bag of heroin. The same risk. Only thing that's different there is that uh, the heroin subculture has you buying it somewhere out in the street, um, tying up your arm so that your veins uh, swell, and, and injecting yourself with heroin. It's just a subculture kind of a thing. And, and I, I don't want to minimize that, because once you get to that level, you're sinking in even, even deeper into it uh, than if you're you know, sharing uh, pills among your college buddies. Uh, it's a different effect on you psychologically and socially to, uh, to uh, inject heroin, to, to use heroin and, and inject it to get high than, than just taking the little white pill that looks like an aspirin. So how do we, how did we come to this no, let me finish my letter. So in, in the letter I say, once you have identified, now you've identified that this is a problem on Staten Island. It's among uh, young people that is late teens going right through. There's, there's really no age difference. 20s, 30s, 40s, they're, they're dying from overdoses uh, in every, uh, every decade up until uh, uh, I think 50s is about the latest I've been hearing. Uh, and then I closed that letter to the Staten Island parents by saying, okay, now you know what's going on, you know it's history, you know what you need to do about it, and if you don't do anything about it, then don't call me to attend the funeral. If you can't get above this thing and you can't push your way through it, then you will have earned your pangs of conscience because you need to act on this. It is not going away. It's not going to get better by itself. Uh, and in many cases, it'll never get better. But it certainly, you have no chance of it getting better if you don't do something about it, if you don't intervene. Now, that, ex that, that letter was, and that was five years ago. So at the rate of, let's say, 50 deaths a year, that was 250 deaths ago that I wrote that letter. And on we go with more and more overdoses from either the pills, uh, the prescription pills, or the, uh, or heroin. What a heroin overdose does is it just, it puts your brain to sleep, and, and your brain stops giving impulses to your lungs to breathe, you die. You stop breathing, you die. 
so that's why the people who are on pills who are going to heroin, um, you're seeing um, more, um, a greater number of heroin overdose deaths lately than you are seeing of um, prescription drug deaths. The, uh, the research done by the New York City Department of Health for the year ending 2012 showed a decrease in overdose deaths for prescription drug users on Staten Island. But it showed um, a dramatic increase, I think it was an 84% increase, in heroin deaths, overdose deaths on Staten Island. So that it went from a death every nine days to a death every five days. And that was a combination of 70 deaths a year. And, uh, excuse me, and the combination of the opioid pills and, and heroin um, had 2012 up to um, 70 deaths a year. Now that's 2012, but we are hearing, we're hearing more and more of it. Uh, John just got in touch with me over the weekend, and he heard about a 23-year-old uh, young man who had overdosed on heroin, right? Yeah. So it's, it's here. There isn't any question about it. Uh, now it while it's true that, that I've been doing this work 38 years at Camelot, and I am born on Staten Island, uh, and I was a teenager in the 1960s, and, uh, and I started using heroin and became a heroin addict. And uh, I went into treatment in my uh, mid-20s, mid uh, and then came to work for Camelot, in my late 20s, and I've been there <clears throat> ever since. So I know this from personal life. I know that uh, buddies of mine who, who grew up uh, and either died from drug overdoses or possibly a violent crime or maybe suicide because they couldn't, couldn't beat it, uh, or AIDS, which uh, in the 1980s, uh, those who uh, relapsed on, on heroin uh, contracted AIDS and spread it among, among themselves. And uh, that was my peer group. I was going to awake a week um, in the 1990s because it, it took about 10 years <clears throat> for AIDS to kill you. Fifteen years ago, our intelligent, middle-class, educated, uh, working from working class family kids figured out how to get high uh, with the most powerful stuff available without going out in the street and risking getting arrested and risking being hurt. Uh, they did it by going to doctors and, and using drugs that are manufactured in the United States prescribed by doctors, and distributed by drugstores. That isn't, you know, coming from Mexico to, to, where, to be processed to the, uh, to the uh, projects, uh, to you. That's very different. That's, that's under our control, under our control. As a matter of fact, it's legal. It's a misuse of legal drugs. Uh, so, so in the not too distant future, when you guys are hearing about, uh, as voters, when you're hearing about legalizing drugs, well, you've already got a view of it right now. You know, this is misuse of illegal drugs. And when they finally surrender, I surrender, and, 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 and make everything legal so that people don't get in trouble with the law anymore if they use, because it's their human right to do what they want to do. Um, You've already got a view. You have a view of what it's going to look like if drugs are legalized. These drugs cannot be played with. They're more powerful than the human brain. They're more powerful than your will. They're more powerful than your religion. They're more powerful than us. When, when we take them, in short order, they take control. 
It's, it's not a class thing. It's not a race thing. It's not an educational level thing. It's, as a matter of fact, this particular aspect of drug use is not in the ghetto. And it's not the poor who are, who are abusing uh, prescription drugs. It's the working class. It's people who have health benefits and then use those health benefits to go to the doctor. And, and get the prescription. So it's a very different type of socioeconomic type of drug user than, than people like to uh, assign, stereotype. Well, it's poor, it's non-white, uneducated, uh, unemployed. Well, that's a lot of baloney. I mean, those folks have problems without question. But this epidemic, that's causing deaths at the rate of a couple a week uh, are not, that's not those folks. That's, just look around, that's who it is. Look in your family, that, that's who it is. Now this problem, by the way, was born with my generation in the 1960s. The problem that we're dealing with now, this aspect of its social acceptance was born in the 1960s with my group, my age group. So why? When from the 1960s, and this is 2014, there hasn't been any advancement, any control over this, uh, any real winning of the drug war. It just continues to get worse. The reason why it continues to get worse, one of the, no, the primary reason why it continues to get worse is we don't own it as a society. As long as it's down under here and you can't see it and you don't hear it, and then you can't solve it. You take the damn thing out and you put it on the table. And when it's on the table, as ugly as it is and as dangerous as it is, you can solve it because you admitted that it's there and, and, and for you to see. So what, what is, how does that answer your question? Our society will not embrace the problem. We really have to embrace it. Who wants to embrace drug addiction? Drug addiction as it relates to neglected children, abused children, prostitution, violent crime. Who wants to embrace that? It's dirty, dirty. Uh, we need to embrace it. We need to embrace it so that we can get control over it, so that we can master it. I'll come to you in a second. Now, I have been trying, since 1976, I've been trying to open programs on Staten Island. And I get defeated at the rate of uh, one in 10, let's say. And so that in a career that spans nearly 40 years, I've only been able to open two programs on Staten Island because the community won't embrace the problem. They won't admit that the problem's there and they won't support people like myself who want to do something about it, make a difference, help save lives. Instead, they, they paint me with the same brush as the addict. Instead, I'm as much of a problem as the addict is a problem. And I'm bringing the problem to their neighborhood. So, so, right? so, so what, what I'm trying to illustrate to you is that unless Staten Island and the country owns it, and, and look, we're the most technologically advanced society in history. We're also the richest society in history. If we put, I do not believe that if we didn't put, make a commitment to solve this, to, that if we focus all our, all our different types of resources on controlling this problem and conquering it, that we couldn't do it. We can do it. We haven't done it yet. 